12.47 a.m., 1st of August. You might be wondering how I got here atop my shed roof. A few hours ago, I had been drawn into the yard, feeling like I needed to, needed to watch the stars. It was a nice break from the four walls I've been looking at for the past couple of weeks, even though the sky was never quite right when I did look at it. Luckily tonight, it was a normal starry sky, just how it was supposed to look like, like the ones I saw in books or movies. Tonight, it wasn't empty. It wasn't following me. It wasn't another roadway. Tonight, it was just bright dots, some of them twinkling, some of them faint. As I sat down on the grass soaking in the wet night dew, I laid back down knowing that tonight was going to be different. It was going to be peaceful. Boy, was I wrong. An hour went by watching the stars trail across the sky, minding their own business, existing where they should be. Then one of the stars grew. I tried to ignore it, to hold on to one more night of calm, but it just kept getting bigger. Then from somewhere near the end of the yard came some rustling. I sat up just high enough to look past my feet to see a skunk wedge its way under the fence. Only that's what I wanted to see. Instead, I saw the fence bend around the creature. It was a skunk. It had to be. Except that it definitely wasn't. It was just off. Its legs were longer, but it stood the same height. Its stripe vibrated left and right ever so slightly. Their eyes glowed and shone, cones of cyan light onto the ground. Its fur was deep like the darkness of a cave. It wandered up the garden, stopping to chomp on a leaf. It looked over to me paralyzed in the grass. I swear that thing shrugged. The thing wandered farther up the yard, loosening up from my frozen state. I slowly rose to my feet. It gave no care until I took my first step. It snapped its head to my position, drowning me in light. The skunk looked away again. I took another step. Again, it snapped back with unsettling precision. We played this game of wax museum for longer than I wanted, but at least the Fae didn't hit me with whatever their defense weapon is. I made my way over to a ladder, out of view of the creature, and climbed up onto my shed roof. At this point, the stonks stared up at me, casting its glow, and that's where it stopped. And that's where I stopped, too. I pried my eyes away from the gaze of the creature to take another look at the star that got too big. I could make the details out now. The solar flares looked close enough to hit Earth. I glanced back down at the skunk. It too was entranced by the glowing star. Now I could feel the heat from the celestial body on my skin at the same time the creature returned eye contact. Final glance back to the sky revealed that the star was no more and the heat disappeared into a cool breeze. The creature hasn't blinked. My only hope is that the sun rises soon. C. 8. $2.55. This is Vending Machine Airwaves. You are not alone. According to our records, you never will be. Find out more at nauticalgoat.ca slash VMA. Subscribe via your favorite podcasting app.